So I am here today to do a book review and the book that I'm going to be reviewing you probably saw in my top 15 of 2015. This book I absolutely adored. It is Scarlet Tides. It is by David Hare. He is one of my new favourite, favourite, favourite authors. He's just excellent at writing. I definitely think that if you like Game of Thrones, and I would compare this loosely because I don't think they are the same, but if you like that sort of style of writing with a whole load of different characters and a lot going on in the world and different elements across different parts of the world, if you like that sort of style of writing and you like stuff that is very intricate, this is probably a series that you will really, really enjoy. I would also say that although I do think George R. R. Martin does female characters decently and better than some other authors in fantasy, David Hare does them excellently well and this series is just one of my all-time favourites for female fantasy characters because there are so many good ones and I would say that it's probably fairly even between male and female characters in this, the ratio that you're following, whereas I think in George R. R. Martin's and the majority of other fantasy series out there, it is largely male who we are following and whilst I enjoy those stories, I definitely do because I've read hundreds of them and I love them all. I still prefer when I get to see good female fantasy characters and it doesn't happen that often. I would say that probably Michael J. Sullivan can do them and I think David Hare can do them and there are a few others that I also think can do good fantasy female characters but not everyone can and unfortunately that is the case with a lot of series. This one it is not. This one has some exceptionally good female characters. Also, the story of this is just really exciting. This is the second one in the series, the first one being Mage's Blood, which also got a five-star rating from me because I absolutely adored that one too. But this one continues the story. I won't say how Mage's Blood ends because I want you to go and pick it up and read it. But this story continues quite soon after the ending when the Moontide has just begun. The Moontide is this big event that happens. It lasts for two years, so it's actually two years out of every 12 that there is a moon tide. We follow these two different continents in this world called Euros and Antiopia. Both of them are kind of similar to the east and west of our main world today. So we have eastern influences and western influences, which is another unique thing in this book. Definitely the influences are not just western in this. There are eastern influences too. I think possibly that is partly due to the fact that David Hare is a New Zealand writer and he comes from New Zealand so he obviously has more insight into the Eastern culture than a lot of Western writers and I think that that really helps the story to feel very whole, very complete, like the whole world is working. So the moon tide is basically this big event that happens every 10 years and it means that the two continents are connected by a bridge during this time and the bridge allows people to cross from one continent to the other with a large amount of people so in great force in like big armies and things like that and basically the two continents don't really like each other don't really get along they have a lot of problems and so when the moon tide is happening a lot of strife is going on in the world both politically and on a smaller scale with some of our smaller level characters who of course get pulled into everything bigger as well i just think that the writing of this is exceptional it's not a really lyrical, beautiful writing style like Patrick Rothfuss or J.B. Jones. It doesn't have that ring to it. But what it does have is just that grit, that raw energy that some series really do lack. And I think that really encapsulates what I love in fantasy. It really gets to the heart of these characters. These characters mean a lot to me now. I absolutely love Eleanor, who is this very feisty woman. She is a bodyguard to the princess in the first book and she kind of has to change her loyalties and she has to question who she really wants to work for, who she really cares about. Is it worth being paid to do something you're not willing to do? And she has this moral questioning going on inside of her a lot of the time, which I think is so interesting to see. Plus she's magical, which is also very, very cool. And in this world, we have mages and mages can do all sorts of different magic. The different magic types are vast and various and you can be very powerful. If you have parents who are both mages, then you'll be a pure blood and you will be very powerful. And then sometimes you have 
parents who are sort of lesser qualified mages they don't have as much power they have less mage blood as the name goes and so your power will be diminished too unless they marry someone with more mage blood and so on and so on so basically it's just the intensity of how much blood there is that is mage blood dictates how much magic you will have then we have ramita who is another character who i absolutely adore she's one of my favorite characters who is a fantasy female and i just think she's so sweet and loving and caring and i don't think you see that a lot in books i do think that oftentimes in fantasy females are portrayed as either someone who is incredibly weak or someone who is incredibly strong and you don't really get to see that in between very often which I think David Hare does very very well because he has characters who feel realistic they're genuine people they have problems they encounter things that they are going to question they are going to be worried about they are going to think deeper about what they're doing with their lives and I think Ramita is one of those characters who starts off quite weak in terms of she is from a little market, she doesn't really know a lot about the wider world generally, and she's a bit unsure what she's doing with her life, and she's kind of forced into these circumstances, and she doesn't really know how to accept them or whether she wants to, and she kind of has to go on this journey of discovery and sort of understanding herself and understanding the person that she is forced to be with, and also understanding whether what she thought her future was going to be is actually the best thing it could be and she sort of questions a lot of what she thought and what she planned and she realizes that maybe there is a bit more to life than just this initial plan that she had and I really really enjoyed seeing the progression of her character which was quite weak which was quite afraid and, and scared into a character who is now quite a strong character and definitely has moments of weakness still which is fine because that's understandable that's realistic but she is very, very competent now and she's learning and she's getting better and she's becoming a better character overall. We do also have male characters, of course. It's not all females. Some of them are really, really brutal, horrible, nasty characters who you would never want to meet in real life because they are just evil, such as Gervon Guile. Gervon is a manipulative so-and-so. He is not the sort of person you would ever want to meet. He can pull you and wrap you around his little finger. He is manipulative beyond all belief and he knows that he can manipulate people. He knows this, he uses this, he is the head of a spy network, he is very very evil, he plots a lot of things. But is he really evil or is he just working for what he thinks is going to do the world and serve the world the best way? It's always a question of morality and whether or not he's really working towards something good or whether he's working towards what he perceives as good. I really enjoyed his character for the fact that he is brutal, he's dark, he's evil, but there's always this kind of humanity with him because we're seeing from his point of view as well at different times and it's hard to completely dismiss someone as evil when you're seeing from their point of view and you're understanding some of the motivations behind why they are doing things and I really really like that about this book that you could get to grips with that character and kind of see more into his head. Another female character that we're following is Sim. We meet her a little bit later in the novel. Um, we've already met her before but she's not a major part of it until a bit later in this one. I do really enjoy her character and the male character who's kind of her counterpart because he is trying to find her is Alaron and Alaron is an interesting character because he is a mage but he has very very little mage blood in him which means he is only a quarter mage I believe and so he doesn't have as much mage blood as some others. He's powerful enough but he's definitely not the most powerful and there are other people who've picked on him during his life and he is on a journey in this book to try and find Sim because she has taken something he needs and I won't say what that is but it's something pretty important to the plot and the overall world and it's going to change the fate of things if he doesn't catch up with her in time so it's quite interesting seeing his story. He also meets some really interesting creatures in this book that I was not anticipating that David Hare was going to bring into the story. This is not the sort of typical elves and dwarves, it doesn't have any of that, but it does have some really fascinating mythological creatures that do come into the story later on. Definitely not something I was really anticipating, but I absolutely loved when David Hare brought that into the story and gave it that more interesting development. Another of the characters that we're following is Kazim, who is again a very questionable character at times, and he is largely spending most of this book with Eleanor. I think that the first book I really didn't like Kazim's character because of what he did 
this book I really started to get to know him a little bit deeper and see what his thinking was and his reasoning was behind what he was doing so again it kind of brought to light that maybe not everything is black and white in this book the reasoning behind his motivation was really really interesting to see and although he does stuff that I don't ever agree with I still think that he is a really interesting character to follow and to understand his point of view and again seeing both his point of view and people on the other side so to speak made it really fascinating to try and choose which side you're kind of rooting for I still don't really know which side I'm rooting for there are characters who are so interesting to talk about discuss and understand in this story and I did actually read this with Michael from Bitten by a Radioactive Book whose channel I will link down below we had a great time discussing this and sort of talking about the way that the world was fairly similar to our own definitely had eastern and western influence but the way that David Hare wrote in this world the characters he created the different mythological creatures that he brought in and made his own really made this story interesting and the plot itself is really fascinating I don't want to give any of that away other than to say that it is very fast paced even though it's a long book it did not take me long to get through at all I really really was hooked into this and although the first third of the first book Mage's Blood did take me a little while this book didn't at all I sped through this I absolutely adored this I do already own both the third and the fourth it was incredible if you guys have not checked out this series honestly please please do it's fabulous it's amazing and I don't say that about too many books, but this is just one of the best books I've encountered in a very, very, very long time. So please do check it out and let me know if you do. And of course, in case you haven't already guessed, I gave this one a massive five out of five stars. I would love to hear your thoughts on this series or if you have any other recommendations that you think sound similar, do leave them down below. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all very, very soon in another video. Bye! Me and you gonna have a little chat